Hello, uh, Gordon. Hello, oh, hello, Gordon. That's me. Yes. How hello. Are you? How are you? Thank you. Oh, gosh, I I got back home in time. <laughs> All right. That's good. Yes. You just got in, have you? Yes, I've just had something to eat. I got in a little while ago and had a, a some some something to eat. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's great, and I'll have a drink after I finish speaking to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, the whole seems, uh, thing seems a little bit bizarre to me, to be honest. Um, the way that you've uh, sort of located my number. Yes. Um, just, just explain a little bit more about that. Oh, well, I got your number from the Charity Commission website. Yeah. I tried phoning Jehovah's Witnesses locally, but no one responds. So I, I phoned a few people on the Charity Commission website All right. to see if there's, I've got some response on that. And I've spoken to several Jehovah's Witnesses, but I right. haven't really had many really answers to my questions. OK, so um, when you say answers to your questions, what kind of answers have you been looking for? Um, well, the first thing would be Jesus' resurrection. When I read your literature, What Can the Bible Teach Us?, it seemed to say that Jesus rose as a spirit creature, and I thought, mm, that's not what I, when I used to go to an evangelical church, that's not what I was taught. I thought Jesus right. rose in the same body he died in. So that's the first thing, the resurrection. Did Jesus rise as a spirit creature, or did he rise in the same body? And um, when you say this, this evangelical um, church you used to go to how long ago was that oh about 10 years ago i tried a few 10 years ago yeah. and i came to the conclusion it was a waste of my time right and um you said to me that you had read our bible teach book yes the teach book which has got um a chapter in there about the ransom god's greatest gift um, you probably remember reading that, do you? Yes. And uh, the ransom is discussed there in in really conjunction with what was lost in the first place, of course, what Adam lost as far as mankind was concerned, the right to perfect uh, uh, life here on a paradise earth, which was God's original purpose. So the reason that Jesus came to the earth was as a ransom, um, as uh, to pay back really what Jesus, what Adam had lost for mankind, and his death, of course, on when he was put to death as a human, meant he had died as his flesh had died. He was resurrected, wasn't he, on the third day as a spirit creature, and. Um, it was in that form that Jesus was reunited with his father back in heaven again. Well, anyway, um, that was the first question, Jesus' resurrection. Yeah. Um, the second question would be the Holy Spirit. I noticed that on JW.org, it talks about the Holy Spirit being an impersonal force, and it. And I would see the yeah. Holy Spirit as a he. So that's the second question. And the yeah. third question would be, um, when I did a search on the publication section, it said, now let me just look at my notes, uh, here it is, the Watchtower for April 2017, page 5, says the Watchtower Society is a spirit-directed organisation, and yet according to the February 2017 Watchtower, page 27, it's not inspired by God. So I didn't quite understand that. How how can the Watchtower yeah. be spirit-directed but not inspired? Well, I think um, by the nature of your questions, this is not just some random phone call wanting some genuine answers. I believe that you're a person who's had many conversations in the past with Jehovah's Witnesses and are not looking to learn genuinely what Jehovah's Witnesses believe, but are looking to have a debate and debating is not... What are you what afraid of? In... There's something a bit worrying um, about that. Um, well, anyway, those are the three things that I've been, I've been, I've been looking at. Yeah. Uh, um, would you be a... well, Would there be well, one that you'd I, want I'm to look not... at? From the very nature of the questions, I could tell the background you're coming from and, and that this conversation isn't from a person who is 
genuinely looking to find the truth, but wanting to get into a debate. So I have met a lot of people in the city of Sheffield, where we are. You say you're down in the West Country. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm in well, Plymouth. Part of the West, in Plymouth, are yeah. you? Yeah, we have good friends down that neck of the woods. And you're saying that Jehovah's Witnesses locally aren't answering the phone to you? Do they know you quite well? Um, I've, I, well, well, I when they're in central Plymouth, that was over. That was almost a year ago. Um, yeah. They just said to me, "Go to jw.org." No, they didn't really answer any any questions. They said it wasn't their job yeah. at the carts. They're just there to direct no, people no, to jw. Well, but I finish. No. They they said they're just there, Gordon, to direct people to jw.org. Um, well, obviously, we'd like to direct people to jw.org. It's um, in a thousand languages, and it teaches the basic teachings in the Bible over um, different. Um, um, yeah, but everyone else is making the same claim. The Mormons say yeah, that their know, website I teaches know. the basic teachings of the Bible. The Christadelphians I, I, say their website teaches the basic teachings of the Bible. Hmm. The Seventh-day Adventists say their teachings teach the basic teachings of the Bible. They're all teaching different things, and they all say, oh, no, we're the only ones who are right. No, How can they all be right when they're all teaching different things? It doesn't make any logical sense. No, but I've, what I'm saying to you is this, that... Um, if you wanted to sit down with one of Jehovah's Witnesses and to systematically look at what the Bible teaches from the perspective of a publication like the Teach Book. No, I'm not. I, 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 I don't. I, I, I'm prepared to look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. If I look at your literature, obviously your literature yeah. is going to teach Jehovah's Witness doctrine. If I look at Mormon literature, Mormon literature is going to teach Mormon doctrine. If I look at Seventh-day Adventist literature, Seventh-day Adventist literature is going to, it's going to teach Seventh-day Adventist doctrine. But all these beliefs are different. They, 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 these groups are teaching different things. How can they all be right when they're all teaching different things? Well, uh, you, you, Jesus said that the identifying feature of true worship was love. People would identify the true religion by the love you show yourself. And everyone the says they've got that true love. The Mormons say, come to us, we're the ones with the true love. Right. The Pentecostal TV preachers say, we're the ones with the true love, especially after we, after we receive the 10% tithe. Um, the Christadelphians say, we're the ones with the true love. The Seventh-day Adventists say, we're the ones with the true love. Everyone's yeah, I mean, quoting Matthew thirteen. Is it is it thirty five? I, I I think that's well, that's 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 the verse, or is it John well, thirteen thirty five? But they can't that, all be right, you see. Well, exactly. So you have to look at um, the track record. You can go into well, as you know, the website itself is in over a thousand languages. Even Google is only in about two hundred or three hundred languages. Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide are, are people who are united, show love for one another, and you in no country would find any kind of division among them. But I could tell this conversation is not one where a person is genuinely, humbly wanting to learn the truth from what the Bible has to say. It's a person who's had I... a lot of conversations with a lot of people and has just wanted to get into debate. and. I'm not prepared to do that any more than any of my colleagues would want to. I, I have spent many, many hours in the centre of Sheffield on one of our metropolitan carts. I have talked to many, many people. But there is a cross-section of people who just want to get into debate and argument. And what do you mean by debate? What is debate? You're saying that I'm not allowed to have my own opinions. You're no, saying no, that everyone really must agree that. with your religion, because that's what... The Mormons will say, they say anyone who's not a Mormon is a debater. They're looking for arguments because they are debaters, because they're not Mormons. You must immediately submit your life to the Mormon faith, be baptised in the Mormon church, and if you don't, you're a debater. The Christadelphians say the same thing. They have the truth. They are the chosen religion that God has appointed on earth today. If you don't agree with Christadelphian doctrine, it's because you're a debater. You're looking for an argument. You're a debater. All these groups are teaching different things, Gordon. How can all these religious groups be teaching different things and they're all right? 
Either they're all wrong or one of them is right, but they can't all be right when they're teaching different things about God. Well, the one thing that you know, it makes Jehovah's Witnesses stand out from anybody else is to do with the immortality of the soul. And um, we adhere to what the Bible has to say on the subject. We're totally different from any other organization, and I'm not saying that because of uh, what it is. I'm saying that because of the fact that is the truth. We have dear brothers and sisters in Russia at the moment who are being persecuted and hounded because of their faith. They're not, they're, not, they're not being persecuted and hounded. They attacked the Russian state. Okay? In, in 2017, you sent 48 million letters to Mr. Putin's office and to a Russian court. You did that to provoke the, the Russian state. You crashed the Russian postal service, which couldn't cope with all the, the post. You crashed Mr. Putin's office and the Russian court, who couldn't cope with 48 million letters between them. That's an attack on the Russian state. Is it? Yeah. Well, when, well I'm sorry, we beg to differ. And I think... Well, you, why, did, why didn't you just write one or two letters to Mr Putin? Why write 48 million to a Russian court and to Mr Putin? It's to cause trouble. That's the reason why you did it. You wanted oh. to be um, your group to be banned in Russia. You wanted Jehovah's Witnesses put in prison. So that then you could come back to the West and go to the weak Western nations, the weak Western governments, and say, we need persecuted status. We're a victim group. We, are, we, we need persecuted okay, status. Well, this, this conversation is definitely not the way that I'm prepared to talk. You obviously have done a lot of research that has brought you to... Does that office. intimidate you? Are you intimidated um, by me? Is that why you're no, running away, Gordon? I'm not intimidated by you at all. All right. Well, let me just share one scripture with you, because you talked about the immortal, the immortal soul. And I'd love you to comment on Revelation 20, verse four, where soul is used in the genitive, the souls of those who had been beheaded. So you have people who are reigning with Christ after their death as souls. Let me read the verse, Revelation 20, verse four. That's all I'll quote, if you don't mind, sir. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those, that's a genitive, who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark in their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So these people have been beheaded and yet their souls have gone to be with Jesus after their death. And we know that it, it is as, as, um, because soul is a genitive. It's not the whole person. It's a part of that person. Souls that's of those, that's a genitive. That's where we beg to differ when the first man, Adam, became a living soul. Now, address, soul, re address Revelation 20, verse 4. Address Revelation yeah. 20, verse 4. Why is soul a genitive here? And why are these souls reigning with Christ after their deaths, after they've been beheaded? They don't cease to exist. After they've been beheaded, these souls are reigning with Christ. Know our um, uh, discussion of Revelation in chapter seven and fourteen, but I'm not prepared to get into a debate like this. It is not. It is not my. Uh, I suspected this is what would happen when I phoned you back, and I believe this is what you do to many, many Jehovah's Witnesses, trying to encourage them to get into an argument. Well, it's been. A, well, I've kept my word. I've phoned you back. It's. Um, I understand why you know many people have not responded to you because they know you quite well and you're part of the country and we have many like you up here too so I'm going to terminate this conversation and uh, I just wish you a happy day okay Gordon bye bye Gordon